Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Once again, welcome back. And uh, another exciting conversation is going to happen, I'm sure, because we're with Bill Jordan. Oh, no pressure. Hey, no pressure. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me back. I, I was thinking the same thing. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> uh, Bill, here's, here's the lead in. Take it. Go with it. Run with it. Have fun with it. Kids have changed. Times have changed. Kids are different today. You remember when you were a kid and you're looking at your children? They yeah. were kids. Yeah. Now right. you've got grandchildren. And they're right. You, all you have to do is look at the generation and see how different kids are today. The kids are different. Here's, and, the, and something hit me, I mean, like right upside the head here a couple of weeks ago. I was driving into town on the, on the restaurant road to get something, you know, or go to the bank, whatever it was I was doing. And I, on the side of the road, on the sidewalk, I saw a young boy, maybe 10, maybe 11 years old, carrying a bag like he'd run up to the grocery store for his mom or something to get some milk or whatever. And he was walking back. He was by himself. And it looked so foreign to me that I was shocked. Not that I thought it was a bad thing. But I remember all the time going off by myself, being gone all day before cell phones and everything else. Are there really that many more bad people out in the world now than there was? I don't know. But it really, it, it struck me that here's this young man and he's out and there's no adult supervision and he seems to be doing okay. That's one bit of a change. Uh, talking about kids now changing. Is it the kids or is it the parents that have changed. There's a great quote, and I can't say it exactly, by Frank Martin, basketball coach, University of South Carolina. And it was a meme I saw on Facebook, some of that Facebook philosophy that I'm so much into. And the gist of it was everybody keeps talking about how kids have changed these days. It's not kids. It's parents. Parents don't require things of their kids anymore. They, I mean, I got this, this giant blanket throw over, over everything, but I don't know if kids are held to a, a level of responsibility that we were held to to the extent that we were when we were kids. I was at a friend's house. There was a party going on, and the party's kind of winding down. My friend, who's in his 50s, is doing the dishes and kind of cleaning up, and we're talking. And his two sons come up. One's like 20 years old. The other one's 16 years old. And I said, I got a question for you guys. Why is your dad washing the dishes? Now, certainly that was none of my business, but it, <laughs> that would not have happened when I was growing up. Once my dad had three sons and at least one was of age, he didn't mow the lawn anymore. He supervised the lawn being mowed. He didn't wash the car anymore. We washed the cars. He supervised and hosed them off. So I just don't know whether the the... And everything is tied to, you know, here's their allowance. Well, there's some stuff maybe that kids should do around the house just because they live there. You know, they're a resident, so they maybe should take care of their room and stuff. I just don't know what the parents, what, how much they're holding their kids responsible for. I'm guilty of it, too, with our own daughter. When I got a ride in lawnmower, we've got a little less than an acre lot here. She was going to, she was going to, she told me, she assured me she was going to mow the lawn. Never mowed the lawn. I never made her mow the lawn. I never made her mow the lawn. I never said, okay, here's how you do it, and show her and teach her how to do it. I never taught her how to change her own flat tire. I should have done that. My dad taught me. I may have told you this. This, As far as my dad, he taught me how to change a left rear tire on my mom's car, Pontiac, back in the day, back when the jack was like, you push it all the way down, or it's going to spring back up and lay your head clean open, right? You remember those jacks? Oh yeah. Even, right. oh yeah, I mean, a, I mean a jack. So I, he had me. He taught me twice how to change that tire. The next morning, when I got up, my mom's left rear tire was flat. <laughs> and I'm your dad was a wise man. And he flattened it just to see if I could do it. They were here yeah. visiting. Both my parents uh, passed on, but they were visiting with us years ago. And I remember looking at my dad and saying, "Hey, dad." How many books on parenting did you read? And he looked like me, you know, like I sprouted a third eye kind of thing. And I said, 
How, how many nights did you lie awake at night worrying about my self-esteem? And again, he's like, what are you talking about? We were disciplined. I was never abused. I never saw myself as abused, but we were disciplined and we were spanked. And I'm not going to get into that debate, but um, I heard somebody say one time, you know, self-esteem comes from having esteem for others. That's where you get your self-esteem. And I'm going to leave you this one final thing, just real quick. We'll make this one into a quick one. Something to think about. Just one thought as far as when we worry about our kids' self-esteem. Just remember, our prisons are full, absolutely full of people, men and women, with tremendous self-esteem. Hmm. Amen. Amen. I love you know, that. Esteem well, for others, self-respect is one thing. Self-esteem is a little bit different. But carrying yourself to a higher standard, taking care of yourself, trying to do better, self-respect, self-esteem, walking around thinking you're the greatest thing ever. Prisons are full of that. Well, you yeah. know, what? what's really interesting about today is that uh, uh, we're not going to go on for hours because I, I, I have some uh, contrarian views to you about the kids today. But one thing I think we can all agree on is that as uh, we go through this journey that we call life, it's always valuable to embrace the boom. Oh, oh very good. Nicely very good. Done. Nicely done. All right, guys. Yes, embrace the boom. Let's talk about baby boomers here. Live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. Thanks for having me back. Bill, good to see you as usual, as always. I Thank you. Say. Thank you. See you soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.